What's happening guys, Mike here from Hammer Fitness and in the next eight weeks, I will be purposely putting on fat. Okay, so essentially I'll be bulking with reasonably healthy food, some bad food along the way, but the idea behind this is to essentially tell people that they can actually get fat by eating healthy food. It's a really screwed up misconception that people think that they can eat healthy and lose weight. Well, I'm gonna show them that they can eat healthy and also put on not only good weight, but excessive weight as well. So I'll be eating a crap load of good food, some bad food, but I'll be showing you all the things that you shouldn't be doing that some people may think that is completely normal in their everyday life. All right, I'll also be getting to hopefully about 10 kilos overweight, and then losing it all again with my next tight and toned participants. I'll be logging every single week so you'll get updates on how I'm going with each individual week, putting on weight and assessments as I go. In the next eight weeks after this fat log, I'll be losing it all again and showing you the exact opposite tricks to lose the weight as well. Tips, tricks, motivation. I hope you guys stay tuned. Enjoy. So this is me prior about two weeks back. Um, and I was pretty dry, pretty pumped as well. This is literally just after a workout. Um, and yeah, the cuts are looking pretty good. So, and I'm tensing as well, which is gonna bring it out. Uh, my lines and stuff even more. Um, but yeah, so I'm sitting at around about 104 here. And percentage is not even that low either. So I'm probably still sitting at about at least 12 or 13%, maybe even 14%. I didn't do my test, uh, which I should have done. But yeah, I definitely assume I'm sitting anywhere between 12 uh, and 14% body fat. So the lines and stuff are there, but they're not as good as they could be if I was below 10. Um, so yeah, it could be a lot better. But this is the start uh, of the eight week bulk. Uh, we'll see how we go. Okay, I just wanna point out something before we get going. So what's gonna happen is I'm pretty much gonna take you through day by day just give you a small uh, snippet or a log on each day you know, up until four weeks okay so I won't give you a every single day or this video will go too long but what I'll try to do is pretty much sneak in what I need to tell you or the information that I'm trying to get across to you uh, one a day uh, for the first four weeks at the end of every uh, week of the four weeks I'll be showing you what my body looks like and giving you a quick rundown on the assessment. And then from four weeks up until the last eighth week, uh, I'll pretty much skip straight to the weigh-in and maybe throw in a few short clips in between. All right, I hope you guys enjoy. I'm gonna be slamming in so many calories. I'll probably be hitting about 5,000 calories a day. Now, so the purpose of this is I'm actually fattening myself up. So I'm actually technically bulking a bit too quick. So I'm putting on unnecessary fat. So you missed this morning, uh, it is 2.45 and I've currently had about 2,500 calories. All right, so 2,500 calories left. I'm just gonna show you a bit of my lasagna. I have the best sisters. Alrighty, so this is uh, roughly about 600 calories according to their weigh-in. But I'll pretty much be logging, uh, not every meal, because you might get bored, but um, a lot of the meals just so I can show you what I'm actually having um, the ratio of what I'm having is I'm trying to get in at least 200 gram of protein um, at least 120 gram of fat and the rest is going to be carbohydrates um, I am gluten free so that eliminates a lot of your pastas and breads and stuff uh, but you can get gluten free bread and gluten free kind of pasta it doesn't taste as good but still good um, but a lot of what I eat is rice, quinoa, uh, things like that uh, to get all my carbohydrates as well as fruit. You can definitely get low GI fruit as well. Nice. Thought I'd quickly log one of my meals uh, and this meal, rice, quinoa, bit of halot I think, and some capskin and chicken. So I'm pretty much having this about four times a day and then the rest is like gluten free toast and some other goodies to get those calories in still hitting the five five k uh but yeah did back and biceps today all training's the same weights going up obviously because i'm getting heavier home time finally 9 p.m cleaning up the gym this is the only cardio i'm gonna do walking around the gym picking up weights that's enough for me uh, especially when i'm trying to put on bulk with the calories i'm eating i obviously don't want to waste calories I'm eating 
I'm trying to chub up for you all. I don't forget he's going to come up. Chocolate! <laughs> you like chocolate. Really? She likes chocolate. <laughs> I like chocolate. <laughs> I already ate my dinner. I was supposed to have this in the log, but it was rice and quinoa. Rain, hail, or shine. Tea. So that meal I just had was about half an hour before I went to bed. So having rice or carbohydrate filled meal isn't really essential right before you go to bed because you don't need the energy. But like I said before, I'm chubbing up for you guys just so you can see me lose weight in eight weeks and get fairly ripped and as toned as I can. So yeah, chocolate and rice before bed, half an hour. Don't do that if you're trying to get uh, tight and toned obviously. 10 to 6 a.m. Arriving at my home away from home. Hammer fitness. Great thing about bulking is you can wear jumpers. Hide the bear coat. Ready to open the gym in 20 seconds. Uh, this is what I'm having for my breakfast. A bit of rice, beef, veggies, a bit of oats and yogurt, coffee, protein bowl. These ones contain dairy. I've actually avoided dairy for a little while and now I've started including it again. The only issue with dairy in myself is skin issues, so contemplating it removing it again. But Dairy is great to get those calories in because of your fats. Obviously high fats. Nine calories per gram can definitely get your calories right up there. Uh, I'm just giving you a midday meal. So this is pretty much like what I have usually. Now it's, uh, remember like I said, the dairy is where a lot of fats are so the calories can be quite high. The one I'll go for is Jonah. Greek yogurt. And I uh, have a bit of pumpkin soup, a little bit of yogurt in there with a bit of granola, gluten free of course, and I have my chicken and rice and halot meal cooking up, so there we have around 900 to 1000 calories. So, the ideas behind me telling you what I'm eating to actually chub up and put on weight uh, is almost so that you can see almost what not to do like essentially the pumpkin soup and the rice meal I'm having right now and the yogurt I could essentially split that over three meals I mean it's a thousand calories or close to you can easily have that over two meals but essentially my body's not gonna be able to break everything down and through that you can essentially put on weight if you're in an excess of calories for your day all right so another quick tip as well if you want to boost your calories up real quick real easy nuts because they're high fats as well. So I hope you're taking that in. Um, obviously to do the opposite, if you've got a thousand calories with a meal, you really do try separate it. Even means, even if it means separating it over three meals. So I have six meals in the day, 6 a.m., 9 a.m., 12 p.m., 3 p.m., 6 p.m. and 9 p.m. But I could do it every two hours if I wanted to separate it even more. That way your nutrients are absorbed even better. That's having an energy drink. Now, with this whole bulking thing, uh, I'm actually including a lot more sugar than I usually would. Now, the thing with sugar, all right, so it's why it should be avoided uh, as well. So usually I'd uh, aim for low GI carbohydrates, which is the carbohydrates that last longer. They're more uh, complex molecule in your body, so it takes your body longer to break down. Therefore, your body has to work at it and the energy is sustained for longer. Now, with sugar, it's pretty much readily available straight away. So it hits your bloodstream, in it goes and it's there for energy. Now if it's not used and you're in an excess of calories, it's gonna be turned into fat to store. Not good. 
and also what happens is it increases your insulin uh, and as well as blood sugar levels so that's going to give you the energy all right, so what goes up must come down and if it's a quick spike it's going to be a quick drop all right so this is where it gets bad when you get that drop that's when you start to get hungry now I'm actually having more sugar and I can tell instantly uh, throughout this whole um, bad Balkan cycle is I'm eating over my calorie expenditure so more than my body actually needs and is burning off therefore I shouldn't need the fuel or I shouldn't feel hungry but as soon as I have that sugar I get some mad energy like extremely good energy and then I come just a little bit lower and then I start to get hungry even though that I've provided my body with the calories that it should already need all right so that in itself is showing you how people can get to their overweight status all right so as simple as just sugar now you're going to realize once you take sugar out of your diet how much better your energy levels are going to be because they're going to be so much more sustained currently sitting can't even see it 105 another dinner i'm actually having uh rice halot and mince uh this is roughly about 20 minutes before I go to bed. So really what you don't want to be doing, um, especially with all the rice, the carbohydrates, the energy that you really don't need right before you go to bed. And so even if it's like about an hour before you go to, uh, go to bed, it's going to be digested by the time you hit bed. And it's unnecessary energy. So just think of that next time when you're having your dinner. You really don't want uh, carbohydrate-filled meals right before bed. Okay, so... Last night I slept like a truck, it bloody hit me. Uh, the only thing I'll put my finger on is the fact that I'm eating so close to going to bed that all the energy sitting there is not allowing me to go to sleep uh, as easy. So yeah, definitely this morning felt like a truck had hit me. Um, did not get a very good sleep at all. So if anyone is doing this just in their general life and you don't get a very easy sleep um, could be the reason so no hygiene oil or even any carbohydrates right before bed um, and really try to keep your meals a lot longer or a lot further away than ha just half an hour just before you go to bed thought that squeeze that in there that is a very important one it's only been a week since i've uh, been eating around 5,000 calories so way too much uh, to what I should be eating even on a bulk um, and yeah just feeling a bit sluggish starting to feel it already put on about a kilo just in a week um, and I'll probably give you guys a bit of a preview of what's going on on my body see how much fat I've put on this is what we have wasn't too much better from the start of the week but still holding on a bit of fat uh, and hopefully in the next eight weeks that I lose it, I'll probably get down to about 8%. Alright, so as you can see, I've probably lost all the lines now, starting to fill in around the chest as well. Can't see any more veins. Don't even have any more ble obliques anymore. Gone. That's side on. Alright, number one. Holy crap! I didn't, <coughs> I didn't actually expect it was actually going to look that bad. Now, I'm going to blame a little bit on uh, the lighting that I had in the studio where I shot the, the one week in uh, video, but yeah, that looks really bad. I didn't actually realize. Uh, I think the lighting must have been on point uh, when I took it in front of the mirrors, which is my before photo. But that and that oh. yeah it's pretty depressing and this is only one week in this is the point I'm trying to prove you see it's not all about good food because I've just eaten good food yes I had a bit of chocolate here and there but it's the calories and it's the timing and it's a lot more which you're gonna discover throughout the rest of the video so pretty much each video, I'm going to do a little bit of a log here and there, the weigh-in, and then I'll give you what you shouldn't do uh, at the end. So our first point is don't eat 
just before bed, especially carbohydrates. All right, you actually don't need carbohydrates except if they're fibrous, like your veggies and stuff. You don't need carbohydrates before you go to bed. There's just no point, okay? Unless you're bodybuilding and you really, really need those calories and you haven't got it throughout the day, yes, it is good to stimulate a bit of insulin to continue that muscle building uh, activity within your muscle bellies. But other than that, if you're trying to lose weight, Stick way away from those carbohydrates, especially before bed. All right, so as you can tell in the video, one, I'm getting fatter, and two, it's just making me feel like crap. So why do it? And I think it's everyone's undereducation about food. Now, if they knew this is what's happening, I guess you just wouldn't do it, would you? I know carbs are good and they're nice to have, but like I said, it's just about the timing. And point number two is dairy. A lot of dairy is going to contain fat, especially full fat, obviously. But, I mean, if you're trying to save calories, maybe go for the skim milk or light. Um, other than that, just try spare your dairy. Uh, like really just limited because it is high in fats the calories are going to accumulate so quickly and in my case I don't think dairy digests properly maybe I don't have enough enzyme production for it but I do have skin issues when it comes to dairy so in my cut I'm definitely gonna cut it out so as you can so it's not too bad today but yeah just across my shoulders and stuff um, just a few breakouts here and there. I notice when I do cut dairy out, it's completely gone. It may be the excess of dairy that I am having. So as a point, like I just said, just try really limit it. Not only for if you're like me and you have skin issues, but if you're trying to save on the calories because of the fats, then try limit your dairy or cut it out. So another point uh, that I'm actually doing with the first week and pretty much every week to come is I'm gonna be having carbohydrates with every single meal. Okay, so good for muscle building because it's going to open up those gateways to the muscle bellies. All right, so it's going to let in nutrients for muscle building. But if you're trying to get on a cut, this is where it gets bad because it's going to close off those gateways to the fat uh, burning. All right, so you want to keep your insulin levels lower to burn more fat. And this is where the timing comes in. And I've spoken about it in one of my other videos. So carb cycling, it's pretty much where you start off the day with the majority of the carbohydrates and narrow straight down so you're left with almost no carbohydrates at the end of the day. All right, so this is one of the most efficient ways to cut and I'll pretty much be showing you how to do it in my cut as well. So it's exactly what I'll be using. Point number three, I'm not spacing my food as well as I could be. And especially for the amount of calories that I need, this is a really crucial point I need to elaborate on. My 5,000 calories that I'm eating in the day may be a lot different to your let's say 3,000 calories. Because I'm weighing in at around about, what is it, 105 now, look, I've got a, a bit of muscle on me, so it's gonna be churning through uh, a lot of calories and a lot of energy, so I've gotta eat more. But that doesn't mean I'm actually struggling to eat the food. Because my body's burning through it so quickly, I'm left to feel hungry, all right? So this may be the equivalent to your 3,000 calories. Let's say if you're weighing in at about 75 kilo, training three or four times a week. All right, so the point I was trying to get at with point three is don't space your food. So as you can tell in one of the logs, I pretty much had about a thousand calories in one single meal or one single sitting. So if you want to be cutting, you want to spread your meals over the whole day or as much as you can. See, I space mine about every three hours, but if you've got a lot of calories to uh, get through, then I'd advise maybe every two hours trying to eat. The point of this is the digestion rate, all right? So you're giving your body a chance to break down food. Now, by not doing this, your body's essentially gonna look at it as an excess straight away, and it's probably gonna tuck it uh, away for later. So especially when you're on a cut, if your energy levels are going up and down, you're gonna get food cravings, and this is not what we want when we're on a, uh, when we're on a cut. All right, so spacing out your food nice and evenly, or as Pretty much the best way to put it is if you can graze all day, that is the most efficient way to both, one, bulk or put on lean muscle, and two, is burning fat. All right, so it's most efficient in both areas. Uh, the reason behind this is because your body is able to break down the food, deliver 
uh, the necessary nutrients and it's going to keep your energy levels nice and stable. Instead of having one big meal, having all that energy and then coming all the way back down again and having to wait to the next meal. The last point is sugar. All right, so in this log or in this fat log, I'm actually using sugar's disadvantage to my advantage because I'm purposely trying to put on fat. Now, a lot of people don't get this and what actually happens with sugar, because it's such a readily available source of energy, it's gonna spike your insulin, you're gonna get a crap load of energy. All right, so like I said in the video, I'll get a crap load of good energy, but I keep crashing down and then that's when I get hungry again. Even though, I've provided my body with sufficient amount of energy that it even needs. So I'm eating in an excess. All right, so that means my body doesn't need any more fuel. But because I get a spike in energy and a drop again, the brain registers maybe he's hungry. This happens all the time and this is where people quickly scurry over to the cupboard and get something else to eat. Most likely sugar again because of the kind of stimulating effects that sugar has on the brain. All right, studies show that it has almost equivalent effects as opium or even drugs at stimulating the brain in the same way. All right, that's terrible. That's week one, guys. You can see the effects already, and this is healthy food. Okay, I'm eating way too much that my body requires, and I'm putting on fat. And as you can see, I've put on a kilo, but I look worse. All right, so not all weight is good. I'm obviously putting on fat, and that's pretty much filled in all the areas of my body and I can't even see the lines anymore. All right, so obviously before I looked pretty good because I was cut, almost even looked bigger. I get a lot of compliments saying, Mike, you look a lot bigger when you get on a cut, but my measurements are actually going down. It's because the fat's getting taken away, uh, dividing the muscles, all right? So the less fat there is in between the muscles, the bigger the muscles are actually going to look. All right, so the lines are gonna look a lot greater and overall um, aesthetics appearance is gonna look a lot better as well. All right, so week one, guys. The next video, hopefully I'll keep it under 15 minutes as well, and it's probably going to cover the next two to three weeks. All right, stay tuned, enjoy. Hope you liked the video, guys. Jump across to our YouTube channel and give that a subscribe to keep up to date on our weekly motivation and tips to help you on your weight loss journey. Also, take a look at the videos down below for some humor, some laughs, and some free workouts and more motivation. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.